Nathan, would you agree that the brand new, well, sort of brand new, all right, the power plant's brand new, GV70 all-wheel drive is a performance bargain. It is, and it's one of the few cars that you and I kind of disagree on. Uh, I, I adore this. I say buy this now, especially the base model version of this. But you're, you're a little bit more on the fence about certain things that uh, I'm not as um, sensitive about. And we'll get into that in just a minute. Yeah, so I went on the program, so I got to drive this thing on the autocross course. And I have to say, performance-wise, it's incredible. Yeah. I think you're right. I mean, there's, well, here, I'll open up the hood. And we can show, why don't you open up the hood? And we can show them what's under the hood. Uh, there's a revised turbocharged 2.5 liter. That's correct. So we're talking about over, we're talking 300 horsepower now. This is a huge increase over the two liter that was in here. It's nearly 50 horsepower more. Um, and it's still hooked up to an eight speed automatic transmission. The six speed manual is no longer offered. I am bummed about that because this is one of the few cars in its class that at one point had one. But for what you're paying, this is the performance bargain. And this is compared against Audi, BMW, Lexus, Infiniti. You name it. In terms of four-cylinder turbos, this is one of the top dogs. And for the money, it's impressive. We'll get to the pricing in a bit. Yeah, good good uh, recap there. And how many gears does this thing have, dude? Eight. That's plenty. I think that's plenty. Now, so let, let me start with kind of what I don't like about it, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm not in love with the styling. Oh, you got problems. Uh, it's just, it's a little weak need. I'd like to be a little bit less so far like and a little bit more chiseled. I like the previous one in, in the, with the front, but I get what they did. And one thing, if you want to follow me here that I want to show you is look at the headlight design here. See how they did the split design? Now it took a little time for people to, you know, to grow on people because this is throughout the entire Genesis line, right? Almost all of them do this, but check it out. Come over to the back. They managed to keep the styling from the front and the back relevant. Not everybody does that, and you'll admit that, Roman. I mean, a lot of people are like the front and the rear are completely disassociated from each other. This design, splitting it here, I like that. I like it quite a bit. And from the rear, I think it's got a pretty uh, sexy Honda push. Accord look. Huh? <laughs> what did you say? Honda Accord look. <laughs> no, 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 the new Accord looks totally different. There is something interesting. These oval exhaust ports, yeah. if you look in them, <laughs> there's, there are real pipes in there, thank you, as opposed to many Germans, but I don't really think those oval ports really work. I'd rather have the pipes come out, maybe those be a little augmented physically. So that's the one part, I, I, I can so, take it or leave it. So I'll tell you, before you take it for a ride, what, yeah. what, what my issue with it is, and I'm, I'm not saying don't buy it, I'm, I think it's a hell of a performance bargain, but let's go back 10 years ago, right? All right. Before like the Model 3 wiped the floor with the BMW, uh, yeah, three series, three, right? Three. Yeah. So now you have a car that is kind of taking aim at a BMW 3 Series yeah. or an Audi yeah. that, that no longer have become as relevant as they once were. They so still sell them, though. They still sell them, but I'm, I'm just saying, instead of like 10 years ago aiming for a car that is now somewhere down here, I wish they would kind of reinvent this segment, bring something new and interesting to it, as opposed to kind of like trying to out BMW BMW. That's but kind of what I feel this vehicle is trying to do. Well, it does it for a bargain price, and it does it in many ways better. And I can't name another vehicle in this price category, even with this one, which is fully loaded, that comes close to what you get in terms of content and performance. Now, granted, there are a couple issues, and I'm gonna show you one right away, and that has to do with when we open the door to the back seat. All right, well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's open the door, and why don't you get in the back seat and show them that issue, Nathan? Yeah, Roman's angry at me. You could tell because he's making me go into the back seat. This is considered a small vehicle. You, we, should, we should, like, two older gentlemen get in the back seat of a sports <sighs> sedan <laughs> we do this enough with suvs getting into the third row right okay i'm in yes you are and i've my head is touching the roof and my feet and i i, I wear a size 12 and a half to 13 depending on the shoes i think these are 12 and, and i've half. got my seat as far forward as i can i so cannot possibly so i can't get so, so come on out nathan you don't fit no, I don't, obviously, because you have the seat as far back as possible. No, I don't. I have it as far forward as I can without jamming my knee into my nose. So as you can, if you look down here, you can see my foot. I can't even really dislodge it. Can you move the seat forward, please, so I can yes. dislodge my foot? Once ago, once, once again, 10-year-ago BMW 3 Series. That's about the size of it. 
Now, if you lift the seat and you can actually make the seat go up a little bit, um, that, that right? will enable someone like me to at least get my feet underneath the seat. So that's well, something to keep in mind. But <laughs> honestly, tall people in the back seat, really bad idea. And to be fair, uh, Oh, and extricating myself is not easy either. For, for the most part, people aren't buying this because of the back seat room, right? Well, the back seat is great for golf clubs or kids. Yeah. Grandkids, little ones, put them back there. So are you saying this is for empty nesters? Rear vents, by the way, are very nice, the way they designed those. Yeah. But I'm not going to point them out because I don't want to have a hernia. All right, let me, let me show you where I had to put my seat so Nathan can get out. So, um, and, you know, we're kind You're of... You're 19 feet tall, though. Come on. Beating a dead horse here. Well, speaking of horse... <laughs> this is where I'm at. <laughs> okay. Now put the seat back to the normal thing. Come on. Well, Ian's got to get behind me. I know, I know, I know. But we just want to... All right. There you go. Now, I am perfectly comfortable in the driver's seat, but I don't have hair or an implant. So <laughs> sitting in the driver's seat, my head, and wearing this hat, doesn't touch. You'll see that when we're driving. You know, when I had this hair implant done, I asked him for a two-inch lift, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, That's, I hear you. That's, see, I should have gone for that. Well, I want to quickly just show you the trunk. Um... This is by no means the largest in the class. It's actually rather shallow, but once again, enough for two sets of golf clubs. And what do we have down here? Drum roll. That, my friends, is a donut. Woohoo! I really, really like it when they put in some form of actual spare tire as opposed to an inflation kit. That is terribly important to me. Uh, hey, Roman, should we take it for a ride? Yeah, come on in. Come on in, dude. All right. So I had a thought, Nathan. Okay, this is rare. We should, we should no longer be comparing it, the back, the trunk to uh, golf clubs. Blow up paddle boards. Let's be relevant to, to the youthful buyer of today. Inflated, you think a youthful person is going to buy this? Inflatable paddle boards, dude. Yeah, actually. Hey, Ian, I hold, the, I hold the camera for you for a second while you put your uh, seatbelt on. It's funny you mentioned that. My wife actually bought one of those last year. Exactly. Day. She did. Let's be relevant. So, um, the other thing that, that feels a little dated now is this relatively small. I will agree with you. This is a little bit small for the class. Yeah. But it's pretty sharp. Here we go. From the fire up motor. And then we do have real HVAC buttons. Proper switches here. Yeah. And we do have different modes. You want, oh, here, you want to put the camera there. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll shuffle through the drive modes. There you go. It's over there. Sport. Sport. Plus. Custom. And that's comfort. Now, when Nico. Oh, you got five. Yep. You now, when he was doing that, look yeah. at the screen here. Oh, yeah, Sorry, there's a lot of sun glare. Turning settings. Look at that. Uh -huh. which, yeah. one you, which one do you want out for the test drive? Sport. Okay, you're in sport, my man. Sport. All right, let's head this hands back to the man. Thank you, Ian. And you do have, I like this actually. We just bought a Ranger Raptor, uh -huh. and it has an auto hold. And I actually like that because I've gotten used to, from driving electric cars, not having to actually keep my foot on the brake at a stoplight. And I like that, Nathan. I like that a lot. It's an interesting mix here because you have, this is an analog gauge. Yep. It's not fake, but this one here is a digital analog gauge. So you can change a few things around this little display as well, which is nice to be able to do. By the way, just so you guys know, when you put the park, put it in park, the um, brake automatically engages. It's kind of typical nowadays. And you have to accelerate a little bit to disengage it unless you want to physically do it. I'm trying right. to turn this fan down. Is there a fan speed? Yeah. There it goes. It just did it. it. Just, it it's leisurely because it's luxury. But you know what's not leisurely? I like this red stitching, too. That's I love nice. this red that, stitching. That's a nice touch. And yeah. the seats are very comfortable. you got to admit, they're pretty comfortable. Uh, they're very comfortable. Very okay. sporty. All and right. the steering wheel is incredible. There's probably one of the better ones out there. I love the spot for the thumbs. All right. little acceleration. Nothing crazy. Here we go. Now, I didn't do anything special. I didn't rev it or anything. Yeah. This thing moves plenty quick. I think that's augmented edge of note. You know, I don't know about that. It doesn't really sound like it. I mean, they could definitely make it spicier sounding, especially in sport mode. Or maybe, if I remember from the program, maybe they're still doing the thing where they actually pipe in the engine note. You I, know what I mean? I think I, they bring, they might bring it, it in, that, but yeah. I don't think they augment it. Hey guys, let us know in the comments below for you uh, Genesis aficionados. Is this thing augmented or is it piped in or is it none of the above? The steering weight is so good. It's, it's, ah, it's, it's on the cusp of being too light for me, but it's I could just visualize how other people would be like, yep, I know exactly what I'm doing, and there's a little bit of response. A little bit of response I'll take over with some of these other steering systems that don't respond at all. You know, Genesis and Hyundai, 
uh, have been just knocking them out of the ballpark one after another. Without a doubt. And I just feel like this one needs a bit more of a refresh than just a new powertrain. All right, let me let me see here how the paddle shifting works. Or Lifts slow. it a little bit. I like that. Yeah, yeah a little bit of... Let's go. Okay, this is going third. Accelerate a little bit. I'm going to drop it down a second. Now. Nice. Very, almost very, seamless. Very old school. Like I say, very old school. And that's a, not a bad thing, you know? No. Uh, and the suspension... Uh, it's a little bit on the firm side, but uh, right. I've been told yeah. that the new one, the new four-cylinder with the... Um, Rear drive actually has a little bit more of a compliant ride. I, I that think, might have to do with weight. I think it fits the character of the car. Yeah. Yeah. It's very taunt. It's very. Uh, well, it feels like the uh, IS I just drove. Yeah. They're I mean, very similar. That, but yeah, it does. And the IS, by the way, if you get the all-wheel drive version, this is all-wheel drive. The IS wouldn't have enough room for one of our feet. <laughs> you, you have to remove a, an entire foot to drive it properly, or to be a passenger because. <laughs> The way the tunnel works, they had to move it over, remember? Yeah. And that's just like inane. But my head is hitting the roof because we do have the sunroof, so that does take I don't know if it does or doesn't take up extra space, but you shouldn't be, frankly, hitting the roof. Now, I would recommend to him that he recline I and can. thus not have a problem, but if he did that, he'd be in Ian, the camera guy's lap, and that wouldn't be very fair. Nice sunroof, by the way. It is a nice sunroof. It's, it's a little bit bigger than standard, which is pretty yeah, perfect. Yeah, which I like, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, the feedback from this car, the overall driving impressions I have of it, if I, see, the thing is, is that I'm getting old, as you well know, people, and so following my fat ass into a car like this, every time I had to drive it, would be a little bit of a pain. That's why SUVs exist, so we don't have to fall into them, right? All right, well, come on out, and let's look at the Monroni, which I believe you have in your pocket. Yes, I do have in my pocket, and... Um, and we can discuss... We'll talk some prices. Yeah, we'll talk prices, we'll talk fuel economy for all of you guys out there. I'm curious what this color is called. It is a good looking color. Yep. This is becoming like standard now in almost every automobile made that they have a battleship gray of some sort yeah. or a primer cement, gray. Cement or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure there's an interesting name for it. Now, first of all, let's talk about competition real quick. Mentioned the Lexus IS already. BMW, BMW 3, Series, Volvo yeah. S60. Acura TLX, one of my favorite vehicles in the class. This thing outpowers it and is less expensive by a good margin. But it's much bigger. No, the, the TLX has a better back seat than this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I meant. That's, that, yeah, bigger, so, yeah, yeah the we're TLX. miscommunicating. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so what's, what's the base price? And how base much is? price of these two vehicles, rear drive, yeah. which is the bargain, $41,500. One of the least expensive vehicles in its class. Remember, it's for class a, being luxury. And for a premium vehicle, that's very good. That's very good. This one... Fully loaded. Now remember, this is the Sport Prestige, and this has the 2.5 and all-wheel drive. It comes out to forty-nine thousand fifty dollars. Hmm. Not now. You're going to say, "Oh, wait, fifty grand for something like this?" Yeah, but if you look at the competition, everybody is between a couple grand to several grand more expensive for what I would consider the equivalent car, and that's where this thing really shines. What's the fuel economy? 23 MPG combined, so it's 20 city, 28 highway, which once again is not too bad. It's a little bit better if you get the rear drive by like I, one MPG. I just feel like not just this car, but you know, for the most part, this entire segment, especially the ones that are gas powered, not the Model 3, feels very 2010. I feel like you know we've we've kind of had an evolution or revolution when it comes to uh, sporty cars, and most people now want both utility and sportiness, Nathan, and because of the electronics, you can have that, right? You can have the tall SUV yeah. and still have you know the same kind of sports handling that this car has. I, I don't know what magic they do to do it, but you can do it. I agree, I agree with part of that at least. You know, you can get an SUV, which for a guy like me is more comfortable, frankly, yeah. but I can see this appealing to people who want a little bit, this will handle better, it will, yeah. it is lighter, and people, some, I mean, they still sell a million sedans a year. They still do. Yeah. It's not as like three million sedans like they did a few years back. And by the way, this vehicle, the, the uh, G70, they've been building this for about seven years now. So it actually goes back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Genesis is getting a little bit of uh, heritage now. And here's the good news. <laughs> yeah. for Just for the heck of it, for some giggles and other things, I decided to look up the reliability of these vehicles. You know, over the past seven years, they've been considered remarkably reliable. 
hitting the top 10 on almost every reliability chart, both the four cylinder and the V6. Now this is the new 2.5, so I don't know how it's going to do, but that's something to keep in mind if you're looking at used cars too. Oh, well, by the way, yeah. this is called, I'm gonna see if I can say this right, Vantana, okay. that, but Vatna Gray. Look, it's V-A-T-N-A, Vatna. Yeah, and then 23 MPG combined, I'm seeing that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, Vatna Gray. All right, there you guys have it. If you wanna feel like it's 2010 again, Oh, come on. <laughs> this is a sporty, fun car worth the investment. Or, but more importantly, I think that you will be rewarded both in terms of investment, time, money, and fun. Or if you long for the classic sporty sedan, then this is a good option. And, um, you know, I, I think both are good. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Good. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out altfl.com com for more news views and of course real world reviews and we shall see you next time nathan party on guys ciao